help attain the country's growth targets and unleash new job opportunities for those joining the labor force. We bothered a study and then the potential is for, yes, that is one of the private industry in the region there. Right? Thank you very much, Mr. and other colleagues from Ministry's Division and the local partner. Assalamu alaikum and very, very good morning. It is my privilege and, uh, to welcome you all to this uh, final dissemination watch. We are truly honored to have uh, Honorable Finance Minister with us. His presence and guidance is not an easy thing. Otherwise, everybody would have done that. It's difficult. Comprehensive studies. We looked into the various areas that we need to look at. So, the Prime Minister's office will uh, uh, be in a position uh, that um, at present uh, we have BEBSA, we have BIDA, we have uh, BEZA, we have PPP. Uh, all are working independently. Uh, so, I think uh, this uh, will work better. Uh, rather, uh, so by activities, uh, coordination, cooperation uh, can be brought. Uh, and uh, in that case, um, either BIDA or BEZA, they can take the lead, uh, but working as the uh, cooperation uh, agent or platform. Uh, last of all, I would say um, ADB uh, has taken a very good initiative. Uh, we will hear from our Honorable Finance Minister. He has so many uh, in-depth information, knowledge and, uh, uh, you see, been the key driver identified in the 7 fiber plan to achieve its accelerated property reduction objective. To alleviate infrastructure con constraint, the 7 fiber plan attempt to fast track the implementation of nationally important transformative projects like Padda Bridge over other major highways and bridges and power sector projects. It will also provide access to service land to the foreign and uh, domestic investor through the special economic zones initiatives. Bangladesh has made great strides in developing an extensive transport system to support the need of its growing domestic and export demand for the economy. It boosts a growing network of highways and rural roads, inland waterways to, to seaport, maritime shipping and railway system. Major road corridor connecting Dhaka with key economic center and two towns and a network of villages, road connecting communities to market centers and main road have been developed. Padda Bridge is, is, is on, ongoing and uh, it is under construction and almost 50% of work has already been done. But once the bridge is built, travel between the southern district and Dhaka will be cut by almost 100 kilometers and benefiting not only the relatively less developed... ...of having a corridor is really to have an integrated development in, that, uh, in, the, in the corridor. In the corridor, for example, we have functioning a development, Bangladesh, uh, this is uh, mostly the southwestern part, I think. Then Bhutan, uh, Nepal, uh, and uh, part of India, West Bengal, Agartala, perhaps. Now, this corridor uh, uh, is being developed over a considerable period of time. I, you see, it's uh, good and at the same time, sometimes bad, to be associated with too many things for too long a period of time. I asked somebody this morning that when was the Sussex initiative undertaken? And I was told that it began in 2001. Yes, it began in 2001 at the think tank levels, I think. But to be become an effective program, 
It took uh, quite a few years, and particularly it was assisted by Asian Development Bank when they uh, took up a SASEC uh, development program. Uh, you have, uh, we have identified here in this course of this meeting and seminar a few areas where special attention need to be given. For example, we have identified that a <coughs> comprehensive energy development program has to be undertaken and uh, Mr. Azad has just mentioned that it is too small and has to under, uh, the, the presentation is, uh, has, uh, uh, has been done on a basis of uh, I think she was, I should say serious underestimation, you see, because he is projecting a 16,000 megawatt economy in 2016 where the projections are really... Three trillion. Uh, sort of, you know, uh, very small in the yes, see, Right true. now, I think uh, it's in... Uh, a little less than 10,000 in terms of demand, but in terms of supply, it's more than 14,000, uh, I think, which is available. We can, provoke, we can look forward to uh, supplying that kind of requirement in the near future. Then, uh, uh, the other thing, mm, I don't know whether we have discussed it much, is uh, the issue of communication, you know, communication between the mainland and, mainland and the southern coastline, you see. This is perhaps an area that needs to be very, very carefully considered. You know, how, uh, as uh, he said, that in the southwest uh, uh, islands you have plenty of land, uh, very, uh, very, no, no human beings. Uh, they would have to be populated and they would become populated automatically over a, over a period of time. But one has to make preparations for facilitating that migration of people to the south. Now, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think uh, Azad is also very right in pointing out something that is so important to Bangladesh, which is land hunger. That land hunger, I believe, uh, demands that uh, uh, populating the islands in a faster manner is very desirable. I think uh, the normal practices, people wait for some time to see some growth in that area, and uh, then uh, uh, sort of human habitations come there after a very long time. I think this process ha will have to be uh, cut short and we have to expedite populating those areas. It's uh, very important that we should do it now. Uh, well, but I have a, a, a different kind of concern right now. You see, this year, last year, 2016 was the first year after the Second World War when trade growth was slower than the growth of national income, yes. less than the growth of national income. This is unprecedented because almost always national income growth has been faster, much higher. Uh, I'm sorry, trade growth has been much faster than the growth of national income. And trade has contributed substantially to the growth of national income of all these countries. Sure. This is what we call export-led growth everywhere. This is a very uh, unhappy indicator, one. Then, uh, uh, there is something else also, I I've just forget. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, today's newspapers have carried a great deal on our garment industry. So probably today's and yesterday's, where it has been said that there is this decline in global demand in the garment, garment sector. And uh, the decline is uh, kind of uh, almost everywhere. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, well, well, let's step everywhere. And then it is also pointed out that uh, three countries are having very high growth in this area, India, Vietnam, and Cambodia. Well, Indian growth is perhaps expected, because India was a uh, kind of uh, poor player in this field. Although, in the, well, India is one of the most industrialized country in the world, not from now. In the 40s, it was the sixth largest industrialized country in the world, see. India had a kind of, uh, I think, decline immediately after the war. Uh, the trade growth was uh, almost non-existent. And India has tremendous advantage in, in a textile industry. In fact, textile industry was its backbone when it was the industrialized country. Uh, this was not exploited by India for a long time. It seems that they are now trying to exploit that advantage. And as a result, quite expectedly, they have, uh, they have been growing very well. I think this should be uh, recognized in this country. but. Here, my main point, however, is Bangladesh uh, fabric growth is fabulous because it doesn't have any raw materials for uh, the growth of this industry. The growth of this industry has been through the ingenuity and capacity of Bangladesh to give value addition to various products. We bring in half, uh, you know, uh, what is called the leather, leather uh, shoe, shoe halves. Uh, uh, we bring in, uh, now of course, in uh, textile it has become a sort of a, a you know, uh, wholesale development from the lowest level to the highest level. Only thing being imported is, imported is cotton. Everything else, uh, in every other process, fabric making, uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, garment making everywhere, it is, it is, uh, it is very good. Now, uh, this, this capacity of Bangladesh in value addition is something that we need to exploit. Uh, I think uh, uh, we are doing it in many areas. In leather, we are doing it. In, uh, uh, of course, garment, we have been doing it. And now, of course, it has become a uh, sort of a, all the way down, all the processes you know, we, are, we are performing in all the processes. Now, uh, uh, this fact that there is trade decline coupled with the new fact that, well, which is of course total trade decline means decline in all areas, but now evidently we find it in the area of carbons. That is something what should worry us a great deal. And here we have to uh, uh, think of uh, something else, which of course in Bangladesh we have been doing, that perhaps we have uh, to continue with uh, uh, emphasizing domestic demand. Uh, it cannot replace the uh, sort of uh, the, the, the uh, export drive at all. It has to continue, whatever may be the adversities. But domestic demand in Bangladesh can be substantially increased. It has been very largely increased in the last eight years, nine years of this government uh, in a kind of a fantastic growth has taken place in domestic demand. 
I'll tell you, uh, domestic demand uh, 45 years ago in Bangladesh uh, meant a demand of only 14% of the population. Today, domestic demand is a demand of almost 50 to 60% of the population. There is still margin for increasing domestic demand because we have still about three, three crores of people whose demand is, uh, they do not have really, really effective demand because three crores of our people are still poor. So, if we continue to follow the, I, I mentioned it yesterday somewhere, I'm, re, I'm repeating it, that if we continue to increase domestic demand, it means that we continue to focus on reduction of poverty. That is where a tremendous growth potential for Bangladesh lies. Bangladesh lies. And that we should uh, never forget, at least for the next 10, 15, up to 2030. We should not forget it. And this is where we should focus our attention. And it's not simply for Bangladesh, I'm saying it. It's also necessary in a large number of pretty developed uh, uh, middle-income countries. Uh, for example, take Mexico. 30% of the population do not have any demand in that country. And that 30% is a figure which has been there for almost the last uh, 20, 25 years. And this is just because of wrong policy because they have forgotten poverty alleviation, because uh, they made good progress, rose into became a middle-income country. For, for policy makers, therefore, all over the world, this is very important, that in order to uh, continue uh, aid trade growth, which is very important for overall national income growth, the best attention should be paid to poverty alleviation in all countries, all countries. I mean, in the United States, there are 14% population below the poverty line. It can certainly be reduced, you see. Malaysia has reduced it to 7% only. What's a, a, a fantastic achievement, you see. Uh, the, to reduce the total population, total poor people to 7% of the growth of total population of the country. I have suggested that Bangladesh should aim at reducing it to at least 10 percent. And uh, therefore, our attention, which deserve, our attention should be focused much more on poverty alleviation as it is being done. There should not be any letter in the, in the program of the country. Well, uh, you know, I'm rambling today because, uh, you know, uh, this uh, discussion uh, the Southwest Bangladesh Economic Corridor. Uh, this is uh, uh, this has done pretty well for the country uh, since we adopted the Sussex program in 2000. We had not adopted thought of the Sussex program in 2000, 2001. The you know uh, uh, in the corridor uh, which uh, includes um, our. Uh, southern, uh, southwestern part, and some parts of India, Bhutan, and Nepal. Uh, there is certainly it has uh, given a, a good growth momentum to these to the to these areas, and that growth momentum is now likely to spread to the northeastern states of India, as well as Agartala, uh, uh, and that way also expand the area in Bangladesh which will also benefit from this uh, growth. Well, you see, uh, I think um, I should conclude here. I don't have more to say, uh, but as I said, it is a very good uh, uh, work by the Asian Development Bank in cooperation with uh, BIDA here and ICT. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I yeah, think, yeah. Uh, and I, I'm sorry, EID, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> I've forgot, forgotten my own ministry. Uh, well, you see, uh, thank you for your uh, sort of uh, enterprise and uh, uh, this, uh, you know, uh,